Hello, Someone Pale Professor Dorn here with another reading. Today we'll be reading Down Against... Down Amongst the Dead Men. Everything will be shown on screen, including the dark mode that I'm reading in, so don't worry about that. And remember to sit back, relax, and enjoy the reading. And if you're interested in more 40k stuff, remember to look up Black Library and anything else on their main websites. So that way I'm actually helping them out anyways, in the end. Enjoy. The city had been lost for a long time. The defenders, however, were still fighting to hold its ruins. Even though they knew. Even though they always knew. A young trooper crouched inside a half-demolished brick-built turret. He held his butt of his last gun to his shoulder. Though it's sights. He surveyed the topic of the landscape that stretched out before him. A ragged, wheezing wind swirled about the trooper's shoulders. Ashes danced in its eddies, and he could feel it string, even though its dark gray coat and thick plates of Kerepes armor. Still, he showed no sign of discomfort, betrayed no weakness. He maintained his rigid muscle lock stance, his trigger finger poised, waiting. He waited for an hour or so. He waited for an hour or longer now. Ever since the shattering thunderclaps of the siege engines had finally subsided, ever since the deathly hush had settled upon this blasted wasteland, who can know what he was thinking? The young trooper had no name. He had no need for one. Instead, he had a number stamped into a dog tag. A number. A number that identified his combat unit and his place within it, and thus said everything there was to know about him. This is it. We have confirmation that the enemy is on the move. The general's voice, distant, echoing, metallic. The young trooper had to strain to catch the words. He was a long way from the nearest Vox speaker. Stand fast. Remember your training. Remember your orders. You must be ready to meet your attackers at lethal force. The young trooper wore a face mask. It trapped the sound of his own breathing in his ears. He held his breath to focus on the general's instructions. His air was filtered through a chest unit, fed to him through the mask by a rubbery hose. Still, it left a bitter taste, a gritty texture on the tongue. He knew the air was likely killing him, in spite of the protective equipment. Did he ever think about that? No. Did he dread the thought of flesh rotting from his bones, his eternal organs liquefying? No. But if he did, then he might have consolidated himself with another thought. That death by radiation was a slow and lingering death, and therefore one that he would almost certainly not live to experience. He had it classified at this planet as a death world with a good reason. It was already been calculated that you cannot win this battle. That is not your objective. Your objective is to ensure the victory costs the enemy dearly. The enemy's forces are outweigh your own. They far outweigh your own. <laughs> For every second you stand against his guns, however, you deplete those resources. You make him weaker. This piece of achievement, in return, is the only resource most abundantly available to us, most easily replenished. The price at is which is already the Emperor's, by right. Praise be our Father, our Guardian. Today you face defeat, at the small cost of your worthless lives. But die bravely and die hard, and your meager sacrifice will help pave the way for his most glorious triumph in the future. Praise be the Emperor! The stirring speech concluded with a tinny fanfare. The young trooper could see them now. Rather, he could see a cloud of disturbed dust billowing amongst the horizon, pressing the enemy's army's advance. The angry growls of machine spirits were carried to him on the ragged wind, soon for the first time in a short life. The young trooper had trained for that. More than it, he had been bred for it. 
To show no fear. Did that mean he didn't feel? That he'd been taught to ask no questions? But did that mean he didn't wonder? Did he ponder the value of a human soul? This city had been lost for a long time. Millennia, in fact. It had no worth of which the young trooper was aware. Neither strategic nor mineral. He, could, he would die for it, all the same. Because that was what he had been breathed to do. It was not only his duty, but his destiny. And after all, the city was home to him. In a way. Although he had never seen the sky above it before today. For uncontangible generations as people had fought and died here. For uncountable generations as people had fought and died here. For the barren soil beneath his feet. Each serving the same and ineligible greater good. Each seeking. Each serving the same and ineligible greater good. Each seeking the redemption of the God Emperor damned world. The young trooper's home world. The only world he had ever known. A death world by the name of Krieg. Elsewhere in the ruins, something had to been woken by the procession sounds of battle. Something that slept for ninety nights. For many nights and many days, and ought to have been long dead by rights. Something with barely enough strength left to lift its gobular head. But it lifted its head anyway. And strained with the muscles in its six half-twisted limbs. To push its belly up off the ground. Dust debris slot from the creature's back as externally. It hauled itself into a standing position. It was dead. At least, as good as. Sustained only by an overwhelming biological and defensive need that wouldn't grant the creature peace until it had been satisfied. The need to ensure the continuance of the great genetic material. The need to breed. The attacking soldiers numbered in the low thousands. They were proceeded across the battlefield and partly shielded by lightly armored support vehicles. The young trooper made out six or seven of these, not many, and from the distance they looked ancient, barely serviceable. The vehicle's turrets, however, were each manned, and he had no reason at all to doubt that their pintle-mounted heavy stubbers were in working order. It was the soldiers themselves, however, who presented the most fearsome sight, marching in step with back straight, rifles shouldered, apparently heedless to the peril that they were pretending towards, as if they knew themselves to be invincible. Their faces were concealed by their gas masks they wore. Could it have been by chance that these lent themselves the appearance of hollow-eyed skulls as symbol of death itself? Of course, the soldiers were only men. The young trooper knew this, as well as anyone could. He had known these men, many of them, all his life. He had no way of telling, though, which ones he had grown up with, studied, trained, and been drilled alongside, like him. These soldiers had no names, and no faces like any other. Like the force of nature, an interstatable and practical force, the Death Corps of Krieg bore down upon their young trooper's lonely position. Wait for it, the general's vox augmented voice continued. Hold your fire until it had been the greatest possible effect. A shot fired too soon is a shot wasted. The young trooper had been bared to show no fear. But most of the men would have fled, or at least frozen in terror by now. Far better to die with your weapon fully loaded than to empty it in vain. Your weapon can always be recovered and used again. The young trooper crouched alongside his half-demolished brick turret. He held the butt of his standard M35 lasgun to his shoulder. He betrayed no weakness. He maintained his rigid muscle lock stance and his trigger finger poised, waiting. A sound drew the creature's attention. It snapped its globular head around sharply and probed the dusty gloom with its keen eyes. A wall had fallen, only recently, bringing down a section of the ceiling with it. The rubble was still settling, and there was that sound again. Loud and dusty silence of scraping of rock against rock. The sound of that rubble shifting. There it was. 
the protruding shape of the govel hand. Twitching, the creature scuttled towards it eagerly. It walked on two legs, but it haunched over, using its two hands and its two claws as well to improve speed and balance. This is what it had been searching for, exactly what the creature needed. Life. A human figure lay sprawled amid the wreckage, pinned by the roof beam across his chest. He had been struggling to free himself, but didn't have the strength. He let out a low groan and fell still. He didn't even react to the appearance of the creature looming over him. Had it not been so desperate, the creature turned its eyes upon its prey. They were met by their own reflections in the pair of dark-tinted lenses. The fallen human's eyes were hidden, so the creature couldn't tell if it had made contact with the measuring gaze or not. The human was unlikely to put up a struggle anyway. The creature's tongue savored the anticipation behind its fangs as it searched for a seam or a crack in the human's armor, a vulnerable spot, the best point at which to strike in order to deliver a critical payload. Had it been less addled, it would have known that this was such futile. The creature's prey didn't have a struggle against it. It was enough that, at the moment, he realized his final breath and died. The creature couldn't accept this at first, couldn't accept the most desperate hope it had been thwarted. It whirred at the fallen human. With its hands and claws, it tried to prod and push to frighten him into motion, but it was no use. He was no use to the creature any longer, no more than a slab of cooling meat now. It threw back its globular head and howled in anguish to the sky. Missiles screamed across the gray sky, leaving smoke trails like scars in their wakes. The death corpsmen saw them coming, and sprang into well-drained action. They broke formation, leapt for cover, where they could find it. A moment later, fire blossomed three times within their ranks, and scores of them were consumed. The rest of the forces continued the relentless advance. The young trooper would have expected no less of them. Many of the attacking soldiers had dropped to their stomachs, hauling themselves forward in their elbows. They returned fire from missile launchers of their own, and from the vehicle-mounted stubber, some of them, the nearest to their objective, the ruined city, lobbed crack grenades. They were targeting the defenders' gun emplacements, wherever they could identify them. The returned city shook with impacts of the projectiles, and the turret in which the young trooper crouched threatened to crumble beneath him. He heard the general's voice bellowing over the calmer. Target the enemy's big guns, destroy them, and you will reduce their offensive capability. Do not be distracted by the... A practically fierce explosion close by drowned out the rest. The instructions had been heard elsewhere, however. Another pair of missiles shot out from the other outside the city. They shrieked over the skull-massed heads of the attacking army, bringing up shoulders, rear as ragged line of artillery units. The first missile strike an Earthraker cannon and cracked its armored shell. The second, however, fell short and only claimed more human lives. The first of the Death Corps men had crawled in a long las range. It was in turn the snipers to do their work. In the doorways and windowways all around the young trooper, muzzled flashed. He held his own fire, however. There had not been enough sniper rifles available for everyone. You remember the general's administration. A shot fired too soon is a shot wasted. The snipers were doing little good, however. Anyhow, for any quartzmen cut down by the last beams, four more surged forward to replace them. Some were driving their dead along before them, utilizing their bodies as shields. They too had been taught to make best use of any resource. Remember your orders. It has always been calculated that you cannot win this battle. Today you face defeat, at a small cost of your worthless lives. But die bravely and die hard, and praise be to the Emperor. The young trooper's moment was approaching. This was what he had been waiting for. That brief window of opportunity during which the enemy would be within his range. Before they overran his position, hardly any time at all in which to act. Did he worry he might fail? in the Emperor's appointed task? Did he offer up a prayer to his god for his immortal soul? He knew that his first shot would betray his presence. 
it would have to be a good one. Then his best shot. He chose his target. It could have been any of the advancing corpsmen. Really? He aimed for the eyepiece of the mask. Did he wonder at all about the face behind those dark lenses? The young trooper asked himself if it might be the face he recognized. A single last beam through the Berlin, failing that. If the mask was only damaged, still it would expose the wearer's skin to the poisonous atmosphere. The death world would be a, equally certain. A slow and lingering death. A single moment. But the young trooper had been waiting for all his life. He held his breath and squeezed his trigger. A voice, a human voice, had lured the creature here to this vast city square, still partly intact. Although most of the avenues and stairways were branched off from it, had collapsed. However, something was wrong. It could taste it on the fruited air that there had been the life there. And not too long ago. Not now, though. The square was empty. From where, then, had the taunting voice organized? The answer came from an electronic squeal, which set the creature's hackles to end. The short burst on the radio static, and the voice blared out again. It emanated from the metal box above the creature's head, a speaker affixed to the side of a mangled rusty lifter cage. The creature howled again, and lashed out with its claws. Its first swipe cut the speakers. The first swipe cut the speakers' wires and choked off its living promises. The creature's blind fury, however, was not anguished. It reached up and grabbed the speaker with both hands. It wrenched it from its mootings and dashed it to the ground. There was silence for a moment, long enough for the creature to contemplate its failure, to mourn its unfulfilled existence, if indeed it was capable of such thoughts. And then, then something new, a new sound, an unmistakable clump of approaching footsteps, a delicious new sound, and a new taste in the air. Did the creature stop to ponder its incredible fortune? Did it offer up a prayer and gratitude to its tyrannid gods for sending it this perfect life form, this human being, this lone human being, at this time of distress and need? The new arrival wore armor, a dark gray coat, and a full face mask. His garb made him indistinguishable from his fallen dead comrades. He had likely been drawn here by the creature's howl. His weapon was ready and put it at a disadvantage. It had more time. It had known that someone was coming. It would have sought out cover, prepared an ambush. As it was, it was caught in the open, exposed. The creature caught the human's eye through the dark lenses. He snapped up his rifle to cover it, but didn't fire. Did it occur to the creature to wonder why, or did it merely count its blessings once again? It had to get closer to him. It couldn't risk any sudden moves. However, it stole a step, two steps towards the victim, keeping its keen eyes trained on him all the way. The human kept backing away a single step and quickly looked into the creature's eyes too long. He was transfixed. It had him now. A plaintive whine, an attempted cry for help perhaps, died in the human's throat. The last shred of his will to resist, he had actually fought longer than most. He relaxed his battle-ready stance and lowered his weapon. He surrendered himself to his natural predator. The exchange had been over in seconds. The young trooper had loosed off four last beams, two at least, had found their targets. He didn't know if he had made any kills. The enemy's response had been too fast, too furious. He had to abandon his turret. It had been strafed, totally destroyed by stubber fire. Stubber fire! That meant he had cost the enemy more than he had expanded himself. 
He had done well, almost unexpectedly at all. He was still alive. Repeat. Those of you who are still able, fall back to your secondary positions. Those of you who are not, if you can hear this message, we salute you. The young trooper's direct route through the ruined city was blocked. A tunnel had been brought down by the corpsman's bombardment, forcing him to take Dictour. He joined an en route by more of the city's defenders, far fewer than had made the outward march to the perimeter alongside him. The Skullmask soldiers exchanged no greetings, no acknowledgement of each other's presence, nor was the young trooper moved to see that some of his comrades had sustained injuries. One of them was missing his left arm beneath the elbow, blood and filth soaking through its improvised tunicate. Keep moving. You must stay ahead of the enemy. He will keep you from forming a new defensive line if he can. Another section of the roof came down. It was some way ahead of the young trooper. He only knew what had happened because of the tremendous noise and then the cloud of dust that billowed back along the tunnel to engulf him. He was saved from choking by his mask and rebreather unit. He knew that some of his comrades would not have been so lucky. He had no time to mourn them. Even they had been inclined to do so. No time to consider that it had been easily have been him. Crushed under the remnants of the city's upper levels. Would have been lost anyway. Just the lives of a few men who could never have been corpsmen or fathers. Worthless lives. The lives of rejects. Rejects like him. For the second time he thought of a new route. His assigned position. He clambered over the remains of a fluttered hablock. He ducked beneath a stone archway crumbling, but defiant beneath the crackling weight of its burden, still displaying the scorched symbol of the Administronum with a stubborn pride. The young trooper emerged from a large open space. He could tell this mostly from the ring in his own footsteps, as he couldn't see or hear a great deal else. The city square, it vaulted roof, was largely intact, allowing just a silver of the sky's gray light to pierce it. The young trooper had no illuminator. His eyes would need a few seconds to adjust to the dusty gloom. He didn't have those seconds. A shape shifted in the darkness ahead of the young trooper and his ears were violated by a terrible noise, a harsh, non-human screech which set his every nerve on edge. He had been taught about Xenos, of course. Twisted, blasphemous monsters that bred in the, every dark crevice of the Imperium. He had never expected to encounter one. Not on Krieg. Not alone. Did that protest horrify him? Disgust him? Or maybe he thanked the Emperor for this unexpected chance to serve. Either way, the young trooper raided his last gun. He waded through the shattered remnants of his statues and fountains. He followed the sound of gasping breaths and putrid stench that penetrated even his protective mask, and came face to face with the creature. It had not sensed his approach and dropped into a waiting crouch. It sensed him. The creature was bipedal, but more insect-like than human in appearance. Two of its additional limbs ended in bony hands, the other two nasty-looking claws. It had natural armor, a centurious blue-purple exoskeleton. Its round head was oversized for its body, and long, sharp fangs gleamed between its distant jaws. The young trooper had no time for this particular breed of Xenos. He had no name for it. He didn't know its capabilities. He only knew that it was different, and therefore a threat. In the shadows behind the creature, he made out a human shape. A fellow trooper. A fellow reject on his knees. Wake, apparently and showing no signs of injury, but unmoving, acquiescent. And in the same instant that he realized what this must mean, he was transfixed by a bear of bright purple alien eyes. He felt them warming, burning their way into his brain, and lost. But only for a moment. Salvation arrived unexpectedly in the form of two more comrades, doubtless looking for a safe route as their own. Through the besieged city, just as the young trooper had been, stumbling into a square as he had done. The Xeno's gaze flickered towards the new arrivals. They leveled their guns at it, but
but fired no beams. They had no authorization to consume resources that way. Even Lao's gun power packs couldn't be recharged infinitely and restored it instead to a two bayonet charge. Xenos bared its claws and emitted a wearing hiss as it expected its Kriegborn attackers to falter. However, then it was disappointed. It reared up and slashed at the two men as they reached it. It tore open one stomach at the first of them. In exchange, it was bloodied by a bayonet at the second, stabbed through the joint of a spare arm as it shielded its throat. The young trooper stumbled forward to join the battle. His mind had been freed once the Xeno stare was broken. It had taken him a moment, however, to pull himself together. He felt as if he were walking, waking from a dream. His senses dulled. The creature knew when it was outgunned, it turned tail and run. There was no point in chasing after it. That much was immediately evident. It was too fast for any of the three troopers, inhumanly fast, and more sheer foot than any would have been able to cross the rubble. It was out of their sight within seconds. The young trooper, trooper went to see its victim instead. He hadn't so much as twitched, even during the brief battle that had ranged in front of his nose. He was deep, deep under the Xeno's hypnotic spell. What had it done to him? It had infected his mind for sure, but if not his body, standing orders in that case were very clear. The young trooper snapped his hypnotized comrade's neck. This is it, men. We have confirmation that the enemy is on the move. The same words as before, echoing throughout the city. Stand fast. Remember your training. Remember your orders. You must be ready to meet your attackers with lethal force. The young trooper ought to have been positioned by now. A minor link in a secondary defense line. A shorter line by far than the first one. The death corpse was advancing again. He ought to have crouched, ready for them, waiting. What then was keeping him here? He had been rejected by the corpse recruiting sergeants. He wouldn't have been given a re reason. It might have been lack of aptitude. More likely he had found that in the flaw of his genetic makeup, one of his kinds that manifested during adulthood, an attachment in the vita womb, a damned mutation. This then was how he served, as a target for the draftee soldiers, who until the day had been his peers. A final test for them before they were shipped off world to their first assignments, a live ammunition training exercise. But all that was before. The young trooper was alone. His two comrades had patched up their wounds and followed the general's voice. Had either of them doubted that the voice was only recording, played a thousand, no, at least a hundred thousand times before. None of the rejects in the field had been issued with a comm bead. Doubtless. That had adjusted a waste of resources, too. How could their leaders have anticipated, after all, that... They may have something to say. But now, then how could they know about the new danger in their midst? As the Xenos fled, hurt from the city square, it left a trail of stinking ichor behind it. It was likely that it was dying, but then surely that must have been so ever since it had arrived on Krieg, and it wasn't dead yet. There must have been a hundred ways down from the old city to the newer tunnels underneath it, the tunnels in which the young trooper had been birthed and trained, in which trench priest, tech priest and medicae specialists labored endlessly to extract and refine Krieg's single natural resource. The teachings they had used to outlaw on every other imperial world, and with good reason. The Vita Womb was his world's most valuable asset, but its vulnerability, too. A hundred ways, each of them was certainly sealed off long ago. But it was the Xenos found one of them. What then? Wait for it. Hold your fire until it can have the greatest possible effect. A shot fired too soon is a shot wasted. The young trooper closed his eyes in the voice of the long dead general. The nearest speaker in the square was broken anyway. He turned his back deeply to his out-of-sight comrades, and he began to follow the trail. 
No doubt he considered this to be his duty. After all, had it only been to comprehend those out-of-date orders, they might even have praised him for his initiative. But perhaps they would have deplored his disobedience. Did the young trooper feel thrill of excitement, or perhaps of fear? As for the first time in his life, he acted on as an individual. Or did he ask himself if the recruiting sergeant had seen this coming? Seen it in his physiological profile? Maybe. Perhaps that was the very reason why they had rejected him in the first place. The trail led him away from the renowned sounds of the mortifier. He found himself in part of the city that no human eyes had seen in centuries. He left fresh footprints in the ashes of the long gone ages. The nuclear wind moaned in the young trooper's ears like a laminate of the old ghost, like the ghosts of Colonel Yutton and his bond of loyalist followers who had fought here once for the soul of Krieg and won. A crusade and victory, well worth its terrible cost. The Xenos had remained under cover as much as it could. It slipped between the most intact of the city's remaining structures, keeping the deepest shadows in a few times, and wormed its way into spaces, unacceptable to its less flexible pursuer. The young trooper, however, found a way around each obstacle and always picked up the trail once more. The splatters of the creature's blood were growing closer together. It was slowing down, at least the young trooper became more cautious. He yanked an ancient, broken shield out from under the rubble, polished it to his sleeve, and he held the shield out in front of him, at an angle as he advanced. His hope was to find the Xenos by its reflection and in the shiny surface. That way, he might be spared the full effect of its alien gaze. That theory, however, was never tested. He heard his enemy before he saw it, heard its guttural growl and its scraping of its claws against metal. It was just on the other side of that teetering section of the wall, almost within his grasp. The noises ceased. Had the creature heard him coming, despite his attempts to be stealthy? Had it caught his scent on the wind? Was it waiting for ambush for him? Young trooper stole up his le to the half wall. He dropped into a crouch beside it. He held his breath, listening intently. He heard nothing. He used his shield as a mirror again to peer around the wall's edge. He saw no menace lurking there. In the ground behind the wall, he found a hatchway. It was ancient, rusted shut. Fused, too, to the concrete by the heat of some long-ago explosion. Rubble had been cleared away from atop the hatch. Fresh marks scored into its surface. Claw marks. Most tellingly of all, dark blood was congealing around its edges. The Xenos had been here, and had been trying to get below, and given up because it was waning strength was not equal to the task, or only because I had sensed that it was no longer alone. Did this prove that the young trooper had done the right thing by following it? It must have been weakened, else surely it would have stood its ground and fought him. The man of Krieg had become the predator now, and the Xenos his prey. The thoughts of mew him with extra confidence as he resumed the hunt? Maybe. He clambered through the arched window frame. It was just too narrow for a ceramite plated shoulders and greatcoat. Snagged on the treacherous shot of glass, making him a sitting target. He tore himself free hastily and dropped to the stagnant darkness. The young trooper was inside a temple. At least it had been a temple once. Its wooden pews had been smashed to splinters and its altar desecrated so thoroughly that he couldn't bear to look at it. A stark reminder of the people's sins. He stooped inside to examine the trail of blood. It was difficult to make it out in the darkness. The trail appealed, however, to lead across the temple floor and out through a hole in the opposite wall. It was instinct alone that kept the young trooper from following it. Was it logic that suggested to him that he had been here for a reason? Or was the emperor watching over him, 
even in the darkness of places, still crouching. He hefted his mirrored shield in front of him. He angled it to look over his left shoulder and his right, and he saw it. A glint of purple in the shadow right behind him. Those alien eyes. He whirled around as the Xeno was spurring at him, hissing fiercely. It must have chosen this place of shadows to make it stand. It must have doubled back along its own trail to surprise him. It screeched, frustrated as its claws were met by metal. The metal of a young trooper's damaged shield. He recognized in terrible sound from before. From the square, it made him wince. The Xenos fell back into its corner, glaring balefully at its opponent. He was careful not to meet its purple gaze. He looked at the creature scarily as its slumbering maw. His shield had buckled under the force of its attack, so he cast this aside. It had more than served its purpose. So he raised his gun. The Xenos ran out of the shadows in which he to hide. It was well worth a small exposure of his last power to end its threat. Such was evidently the young trooper's judgment, anyway. And no one was present to jesting him. The Xenos must have known it couldn't run. It came at the young trooper again in a whirlwind of teeth and limbs. Unflinching, he fired two beams into the twisted body. The first was deflected by the creature's exoskeleton, and the second burned a round hole through its cranium. But it didn't die. The Tennessee surprised the young trooper, however. Then he couldn't afford to show it. He braced himself, transferring his weight to his back foot to meet the creature's charge. It almost bore him into the ground. Even so, bony hands snapped shut around his last gun and tried to wrench it from his grip. At the same time, claws swiped at the trooper's throat. He deflected the ladder with the armor-plated elbow, pushed when the Xenos was expecting him to pull, and rammed the stock of his last gun into the gripping jaws. Teeth shattered, the creatures howled and recoiled in pain, but the gun was lost. He reached for his knife instead. His foe was quicker. Its bloody tongue lashed out like a whip. Its aim unringing, its teeth pierced the young trooper's heavy greatcoat, finding a gap in the armor beneath it. It skewed his shoulder above the clavicle, eliciting from him his first vocal reaction of the day. A sharp intake of breath. Blood rushed to his head, and his knees buckled. Did he know, in the moment, what the creature was doing to him? Perhaps. If the Imperium had been somewhat fearer, with its secrets, had been able to name it. Gene stealers existed to reproduce, and that was all. This one would have come to Krieg for that sole purpose, likely stowing away aboard a supply ship or a trooper carrier. Its vicious tongue doubled as something like a omnipotent provider. It was trying to impregnate the young trooper with an embryonic organism, one that would rewrite his genetic code and corrupt his mind. Any offspring he sired, then, would be the gene stealer's offspring, mutant monsters like itself. The young trooper's sole purpose, then, would be to bring such monsters into being, as many of them he could manage, and to nourish them. It couldn't work. He was a reject, and rejects were barred from participating in Creek's breeding program. So win or lose this battle, the creature's bloodline would end here either way. Even if either of them would even live. The human being or the alien could have known it. If only either of them could have appreciated the brutal irony. The young trooper swung his knife with all the force he could still muster. With the last ditch desperate tactic, it bore fruit. His blade sliced through the knotted muscle, and he was defeated, defended by the nerve rending shriek. Strinking echo splattered the lenses of his breather mask and blinded him too. The tip of his severed tongue was still embedded in his left shoulder. He felt for it and gripped it between his gloved fingers and yanked the slimy appendage out of its bleeding flesh and flung it empathetically away from him. By the time he was able to hear and see again, it was over. The Xenos had given up a frenetic struggle and surrendered, at least to its mortal wounds and radiation sickness. The young trooper picked himself up and glazed at the cadaver empathetically.
impassionately. His thoughts were his own, as they had always been. One thought, however, was most certainly have crossed his mind. He must have been aware that he had done more than just killed the enemy. Thanks to him, a lone reject born of unworthy people, the Xeno scum, had suffered the most cruel of all possible fates. A fate that the young trooper no longer had to fear himself. It had died with its life's purpose unfulfilled. The war was over. You can hear the general's recorded voice again. Repeat, the city has fallen to the main forces. All surviving defenders should now return to their barracks. Did the young trooper breathe an inward sigh of relief at that paramount summation? His encounter with the Xenos had taken its toll on his body. His shoulder was stinging where his tongue had broken his skin. His temples were pounding, and his face was drenched in sweat. His wound was probably infected. You have tasted defeat today, but no matter. Remember, such an outcome was expected. The important thing is that you had served faithfully and well. You have justified your emperor-given lives. Praise be to the emperor! The young trooper staggered under the weight of his dead burden. His foot slipped between shuffling hunks of debris, and his ankle twisted. The Zeno's body slid off his shoulders. It smacked into the ground face first and lay broken. An empty shell. He didn't have the strength to lift it again. And who could know why he had brought it this far anyway? He thought it might prove useful to the specialist in the tunnels below. A fit subject for their study. Or had his motives been more selfish? Remember, you must salvage as much equipment as you can from the fallen. Through his fever, the young trooper recognized the structure ahead of Tim, the great stone archway which led into the city square, the square in which he had his first come face to face with his destiny. His barracks were not far from here. If he could make it there, he would be able to eat, drink, sleep, and receive medical treatment, and be ready to fight again and die tomorrow. That was if he wasn't so exhausted from breaking bones. Did he wonder if his unauthorized abuse absence had been noticed? The young trooper heard movement ahead of him, through the haze, smoke settling from the battle in his own eyes, misting. He saw masked figures, fellow rejects. No. They were far too well equipped with backpacks and belts that bulged and bristled with tools and weaponry. One even had a flamer slung across his left shoulder. The two of them were crouched beside the prostate from a right, from a third, either tending into his injuries or administrating his final rites. The trooper couldn't tell which. Six lies guns snapped up to cover him. He didn't raise his own weapon in return. It was simply that he lacked the strength to do so. Or did the young trooper sense the brutality of such an act? Had he thought himself safe because the exercise was over. At what point did he realize that this news hadn't reached the enemy? That their orders to kill on sight had not yet been countermanded. Five or six death corpsmen held their fire. There was no sense in wasting ammunition. After all, the six, and the one that, by unspoken agreement, had the best shot, squeezed his trigger. He aimed for the eyepieces of his victim's mask, a single last beam through the brain. What final thoughts passed through the young trooper's mind as he died? Did he rail against the injustice of his demise to be gunned down by one of his own kind after protecting the descendants from infection, safeguarding their people's future? Hadn't he proved the recruiting sergeants wrong about him, after all? Did he perhaps become, bemoan the fact that they would never be told of his heroism? Or was it sufficient that his god, the Emperor, knew? Perhaps he accepted a fate for which he had been thoroughly prepared. He might have content, even, with the high price for which he had sold his life. In the final analysis, of course, it didn't matter. It didn't matter that the slightest what the young trooper felt or thought. It never had. The first troop ship arrived that same evening. The new recruits of the Death Corps of Krieg stood ready, waiting.
They formed up in platoons at the edge of the ruined city. The recent battlefield. Did any of them think about the body still laying in its rubble? Somehow they managed to line themselves up perfectly, despite the trenches and potholes beneath their feet, the scars that ran across the planet's dead surface. They kept their backs straight and their rifles shouldered. They had sacrificed much for their meaningless triumph. If the superiors considered the casualty rate acceptable, however, then the, who were they to argue? Yes, there had been some deaths, but the survivors had emerged from the exercise with skills honed and with experience that would certainly prove invaluable to them on the battlefields to come. You have tested victory today, but remember, such an outcome was expected. Lock speakers were attached to what remained of the crumbling city walls. The voice of a long-dead general blared out of each of them, loud, echoing, and metallic. A recording played a thousand, a hundred thousand times before. The new courtsmen obeyed with the voice orders. They stood fast as two dropships descended into the plain in front of them. The downdrafts blowing up twin hurricanes as ash and soot. Hatchways cycled open and access ramps were lowered, but no living being emerged from inside the vessels to breathe in Krieg's deadly atmosphere. Few beings ever dared to do that. The courtsmen set off towards the ships before the dust began to settle became a silhouette, sundering through the poisonous clouds. Platoon by platoon they failed, above the first dropship, then the second. The important thing is that you serve faithfully and well, and that you will continue to do so. Soon these soldiers, the young ones, would be conveyed into an obscure world located near the outer rim of the Segmentum Tempestis. There... They would replace the newly dead three Krieg regiments there to fight a losing battle against an ancient, powerful evil. Their first real battlefield, for so many of them, the last. And all the time, their generals' voices would be ringing in the, all their ears. It has already been calculated that you cannot win this war. The Emperor's most glorious triumph will not be achieved in your lifetimes. But for every second you stand against the enemy guns, you deplete his resources. You make him weaker. Your lives may be worthless, but you can sell them dearly. This, then, is your objective. It is your duty and your destiny. Die bravely, die hard, and know that even the meager sacrifice you make will be noted and weighed against your ancestors' heresies. You will be hesitating the hour, that glorious promised hour, when the sins of Krieg will at last be forgiven and its sons redeemed in the Emperor's all-seeing eyes. And thus, your fleeting existence will have been justified. What a sad and horrific story. The end of one life and soon the end of many more. But that is the way of Krieg. Self-sacrifice and atonement. Anyways, that has been me finishing this book. I hope you enjoyed and, well, got something done today. Been productive at least a little. Remember, we're all under quarantine and all that, so... <laughs> uh, enjoy yourselves out there. For in the Imperial Creed, you only have one life to give. Again, before I forget to mention it, Remember to go and check out Black Library and GW's main website. I know I said it at the beginning of the video, but I wanted to say it again, so that way, I, I, it's just there. Because without them, we wouldn't have any of these amazing books, stories, or this universe in general to think about. Anyways, thank you for watching. Good day.